Hey everyone and welcome back. In this video we will be going through the creation of the widget systems. So we currently have a pretty playable game. There's a few things that we can't do because we don't have all of the assets ready and that's things like the level complete screen or the game complete screen or a main menu that we can interact with. So in preparation for all of these things we will have this one video where we just focus purely on getting the widgets ready. If we go to the blueprints folder the first thing that I've noticed is I've actually named this slightly incorrectly so if you wanted to follow the naming convention that most people inside of Unreal go for uh, it's not BPW for blueprint widget it's actually widget blueprint so I'm just going to F2 this add a W at the beginning and remove the one at the end. Just for consistency, I'm gonna call all of the future blueprints the same thing in this project. So if we remember to create a new widget, we want to go to the user interface and the widget blueprints so we can create a new one. And I think to begin with, we'll focus on the main menu, so the intro screen. So for this, I'll just call this WBP underscore main menu. And if we double click into this, we can start creating the main menu screen. Now, the first thing's up here on the screen size, just to make sure that it's automatically set, we have this set to 1080i, uh, 1080p, so we've got the full HD screen resolution. And this is gonna be a very simple screen to keep in line with everything else so we can get the direct comparison from the other project. We're going to use a white background with a couple of bits of text. So for the white background, we want an image, which is just over here to the left, and we can get that and drag that straight onto the canvas. I'm gonna come over here and rename this to BG for background. And what we want to do is we'll just set the anchor point to be the full screen. And then we just need to zero out all of the offsets on the left, top, right, and bottom. Don't need to worry about the alignment. And that is the screen now ready for us. So the next things that we want will be the text. And again, we can just drag one of these in I'm going to change the color of this to be our slightly darker gray color. Change the typeface to be uh, not bold, but I prefer the uh, Roboto light. And then we can just leave the font the same. And I think for the title, the size of this is going to be better. It's something like 120 for the uh, the font size. And if we just size this to content, it means that that, uh, that box will wrap correctly around the text. Now, the next thing we want to do is position this. So we're going to get the anchors. We will center this and give this an alignment offset of 0.5 and 0.5. And that just means that if we put uh, zero in the position X and the position Y, that would be perfectly center on the screen. And then we can just drag this up and see where this is gonna look good on the Y axis. And I think somewhere around minus 300 might be okay there, or maybe minus 350, because we'll need a little bit of space for the, uh, the next bit of text that we're gonna add. With that done, we can come to the text box just here and actually set the text to be what we want it to be. And this will just be welcome to. And then if we click anywhere, that will change this. And I'll come over here. I want to press Control C, select the canvas panel again, and Control V to copy this in. I'm going to make a few changes to this one. So we'll change this to just be the, um, we called this Cube Runner, didn't we? So we'll call this Cube Runner. So welcome to Cube Runner. We want to center this on the X position again, and then just drag this up a little bit on the Y. So for the Y, I don't want it to be completely central. I think that'll look a little bit weird. So maybe something like minus 70 is going to work there. But then when I come back down, I'll change this to be from being light to being a bold font again, as the uh, the name of this is going to look a little bit better and probably in bold. And then I want to make sure that we use the same shade of red again. So I'm going to go back over to our materials, come in here, find the flat red, and I'm just going to get the hex value again. And then if we navigate back over to the widget, we can just come down to the font color or the color and opacity. We'll paste this in and then we'll have our red color for the text here. And looking at it, I think maybe having this all in uppercase would be a little bit more interesting to look at. Just a little bit more striking there. So I'll leave that as the uppercase text. And the very final thing is we will want our play button. So if we go over to buttons, we'll just drag this again onto the canvas. We will take the same steps to center the anchors. We will zero out the position and we will add a 0.5 offset. So this is completely central to begin with. And then we can just drag this down so it goes a bit lower below the name. So nice and simple. So again, just round this off to 200 should be fine. And I want to add a little bit of text into the cube. So I'm gonna grab the welcome to because I already have the text set as I want it. I will copy that and then make sure you've got the button selected and paste that onto the button. So we will address the text in just a moment, not being quite the right size. But if we finish off with the button, so what I don't like in Unreal is this kind of beveled or shaded button thing that they provide. So I'm gonna to go to the style and I'm gonna to go to normal. And the way that we're gonna get around this is we will give this an image. So make sure that you've got enough space and the image we want to find is actually 
inside of the engine content. It's not something we need to import. So we want to use this little I button down here. I'm going to go to show engine content and just type the word square. And we just want the white square texture. And this instantly looks better if we just change the color to be a kind of grayish color. So that's looking a little bit nicer now, a little bit more modern. And we want to make sure that we do this for the hovered button and the pressed button as well. So we'll just find the square for this one. And we'll do the same thing again for the pressed button. So what these are, if you're not familiar with the widget interface, is we have our normal state, our hovered state, and our press state. So this is just how they're going to look when you are either not selecting it whilst you have your mouse hovered over it, and then when you click it. And if you wanted as well, we can grab the color that we've taken just here, and we want to make sure that the colors are kind of mirrored across all of the different states. So I'll paste that into the hovered tint as well. When you hover over it, you tend to find that it goes either a little bit lighter or a little bit darker. So I'm going to make this a bit lighter to show that the mouse is hovering over it. And then when you've pressed again, we want to give this another tint. So I'm going to use that same shade and I'll just drag this down a little bit. So when you actually press the button, it gets a bit darker. Okay, so that's the first step done. We now have a slightly better looking texture. And now we just want to scale the button. So if we do the uh, set to content size, I'm going to come over to the text and we'll make the text a lot smaller. So this will probably be fine at 24. Um, and actually going back to the button, we don't want this to size to content at all. We want to make the button, give this a size of about 300 to 100 for the button scale. And then finally, we'll just go back down to the text again and we'll just change this to say play. Okay, so we now have our play button. And I'm just going to rename this so we know what it is later. And we'll just call this play button. And this is really going to be useful for when we add the logic to the blueprint. In fact, now that I say that, the logic for this blueprint is very simple. So we'll do that now. So we'll come over to the graph. With the play button already selected, we can hit the on clicked button. And on here, all we want to do is open a level. So find open level and give it the level name, which is going to be main one. So the idea is going to be that we will be immediately brought into the main menu map. So we're going to make a new map in a moment. And when the player presses play, we want to launch the first level and then we'll work out the level order based on when they've completed levels and when they are failing. Okay, so just make sure that we go back in and save the changes to this blueprint. We can close that for now and we'll go back out to our blueprints folder and we'll create the next one, which will be our level complete widgets. So again, we'll go to user interface widget blueprints, and I'll just call this one WBP underscore level complete. Now we're going to do something fairly similar here. So the first thing we want is our image. So we can just drag the image in again, we'll make this full screen, we will zero out the axis so that it takes up the whole screen. And that's the background ready for the level complete. And then we want our text for the screen as well. And in fact, I'm going to go back very quickly to the main menu, I just realized this is going to be pretty much the same text. So I'm going to control C the welcome to text, I'm going to paste that in just here on the canvas, and just come up and make sure that this is again, anchored to the middle, we can zero out the x position. And in fact, I'll zero out the y position as well, we'll make this completely central. And I'll just change this to say level complete. Now, if you're wondering how I've done that to get the space, just by holding shift and enter, and that will drop you down an entire row. And what I want to do is obviously that looks a little bit funny at the moment, I'm going to come down to the appearance. And I want to change this to be a central justification. And there we have our level complete text, which is just going to fade in. And that's going to be the next thing is I'm going to show you now how to add an animation to a widget blueprint. So we're learning a lot today, this is going to be pretty cool. Now animations can be really simple, but they're also a little bit confusing when you get started with these. So what we want to do is we want to fade in the white background to begin with, and then we'll focus on the text afterwards. So with the background image selected, we're going to go down to this animation button in the bottom left. We're just going to call this fade and we want to make sure we're on the timeline tab. Now the next thing we want to do is we're going to set up a track, which will be the track that we will be animating. So if we hit um, the plus new track and we want to do that to our image 43, which is a bit of a random name. So I'm going to come up here, F2 this, and again, we'll change this to background. So we now know that we're altering the background in the track. So if we again press the plus on the track on the right hand side now, what we want to affect is the color and the opacity. So what we'll do is we now have our keyframes which are appearing on the timeline over here, I'm going to drag this over to one second. So it's going to take one second to come in. And I'm just going to say add new keyframes again for this timeline. So we now actually have an animation. Now under here, I'm going to come back and on the opacity, I'm going to turn this down to zero. And again, we're going to hit the add keyframes, and this is going to override those keyframes. So now the animation is going to look like this. When you complete a level, we're going to call this blueprint to be made and animate it in like so. Nice and simple. So what we can see is we still have the text. So we want to add a, another track. 
and that track will be to our text. And what we want to do isn't to uh, manage the color and opacity this time. For the text, what we want to do is we're going to add a new track on this one, and this is going to be the visibility. So we're just going to say whether or not this is visible. So we're going to start with this visible, and then at the start, the zero second point, we're going to turn this to hidden and add a new keyframe. So now what you'll see is the full track will look like so. We'll get a white screen, and then when the white screen is in, pop, we will get our text to say that you've completed the level. Nice and simple. So as I said, it can be a little bit confusing because people forget this step. So remember this step when you do this. At the moment, if we called this, we would be calling on to screen a blank widget. In fact, I'm going to show you this just so it really sticks in. So if we go to the player, this is going to be a temporary call, so we're not going to worry too much about this. But we're not going to add the HUD. We'll change this to be the level complete widget. Now if we press play, we have created and we have spawned that level complete widget. You can see that we've stopped spawning the HUD, but we're not seeing it for some reason. In fact, that's because we've set that to a reference. So we're just going to bypass that now. As I said, very hacky. There you go. So we can see there's no animation at all. It just start. Now what we want to do to make sure that this works is we're going to come back to our level complete. And in the graph, what we want is over here, we now have an animation called fade. We want to control drag this in and we want to drag off of here and say play animation. So we're going to call the play animation node. On the event construct, we're going to play that. And this is what calls the animation to actually be used. So in the designer, we're just creating an animation to exist. Uh, this is the visual representation of what we want at the end. Without actually calling it in a graph somewhere to say to run this, it's purely there as a visual effect to be used at some point. Now if we go back and press play again, we can see we actually now get the animation. We don't get the screen being there immediately. So that's what I was saying. Really important to remember. Very, very simple to do. But if you forget that step, then you'll be sat there wondering for quite a while why it is that you have your animation, but nothing is happening. So now if you were following along, uh, just come back over here. We will link these back up as we do want this to happen. Make sure that we reset the WBP underscore HUD to be the, uh, the widget that we're creating here. And then link these back up as well to store that variable. Um, and we can just delink one of those by alt clicking and pull that back in. Okay, so that the level complete widget's now ready as well. So we can close that. And for the final widget, uh, we don't need any animation or anything. This is just going to be a jump from one widget to the other. And this is going to be so similar to the main menu. I'm just going to control W to copy this. And I'll just rename this to game complete. Now if we double click to come into the game complete widget, I'm just going to grab the welcome to text. And I'm going to change this to thanks for playing and uh, leave the cube runner down there. So thanks for playing cube runner. And then the button text, if we just grab that, I'm going to change this from play to replay because we already have the logic there. And I'm going to grab this button. I'm going to press control C, select the canvas. You always need to select the canvas to get it to copy back on somewhere. And we will drag this down. In fact, we'll use this properly. So we'll zero this out on the X axis and we'll make this a, say 300 units. No, we need to be 400 units on the Y axis. Uh, maybe 350. Yep, 350 looks better. Rename the button to be quit button. And we'll change the text here from replay to quit. And all we really need to do now is we're going to go over to the graph. We already have our logic for the replay button. So when the play button or the replay button is pressed, we'll just update that. Uh, we haven't changed the name, but that's fine. We want an on clicked for the quit button too. And off of here, rather than open level, we will just find the quit node. So here we have quit game and we have the option to completely quit the game or to put the project in the background. So we want to completely quit out. And there we have the logic. So the user can now either replay the levels or they can completely close the program. And both of these will be working because the logic's implemented. So in this one video, slightly longer than I usually like, but we have all of the widgets ready for the next video where we can start implementing them. And we'll have then our complete game loop where we can go in, we can tell the player that they've completed their level, or we can tell them that they've completed the game and give them options to navigate through the game via menus. As always, I do hope that this has proven useful. And if it has, or if you've enjoyed the video, then please do leave a like and share the video around. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with the latest content coming from the channel. As ever though, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.